Hey, ladies and gentlemen, wow, ladies and gentlemen, I, ladies and gentlemen, what is up? ADS Swing 101 here, and welcome to the next, the latest episode of the Anime Live Chat Podcast. Uh, we're on episode two. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the the upcoming episode of Bleach, episode six, the White Haze, um, as well as we're going to be talking about the the Luffy versus Kaido fight, and. Um, you know, Bleach is one of the main animes that I've been watching. I read the Thousand Year Blood War years ago, and uh, it's good to see what they're implementing from the manga. Even though uh, uh, I believe Kubo said he, it wouldn't be any filler, so they missed a lot of stuff um, that I'm going to go over. Um, some backstories that they missed uh, between episode five and six, and um, you know, I didn't watch episode six yet, but. Uh, but yeah, like we're gonna go over it. We're gonna go over it. So, the um, this past episode of Bleach was episode five called "Rages at Ringside." Rages at Ringside, and it covered the fight between Renji and Sternritter S. Master Masculine, as well as the fight that he had with uh with Kinsei and uh and Rose which I feel like was one of the dumbest fights in the history of, the, of, of anime, but clearly the dumbest fight in um, the Thousand Year Blood War. Cause Rose, did, he, he would have been able to kill Master Masculine if he would have just shut the hell up and not explained his ability. So that that's what that was. So right now we are on chapter 564, and this is the last chapter that episode five implemented. As you can see, this is when um, Renji activated Soul Soul Zabimaru, Soul Ozabimaru, and you see the panels is when he was talking to um, Ichibe, who's the head of the Zero Squad or the Royal Guard that protects the Soul King. So we're gonna skip this. Uh, I'm, I'm just showing you this is the fight that happened, and then going to the next chapter, chapter 564. This is telling the backstory of Yuha, about how he was born without powers, but he was born with the ability to share part of his soul with other people, right? And this is how he created the Stern Ritters um, and the uh, Schultzstiefen. So they didn't tell this backstory in in Bleach because this is considered filler. And again, they, Kubo mentioned that they weren't going to be doing any filler during the Thousand Year Blood War. So the backstories probably get like left out. But there was a god that they worshipped during in, in his village called Yuha, and he adopted that name. And he was able to create, you know, the Quincy's from basically his blood and that's how pretty much how <laughs> Yuha became who he is today now one interesting panel that they didn't show at the end of episode 5 was that when uh, at midnight when Yuha went to basically went to sleep um they didn't show where he went. They they kind of just showed like him disappearing into the shadows or using like that shadow ability to to go wherever he was. In the manga, they actually show a door where his room is at the end. And between this episode and between this chapter and the next chapter, Jugum basically explains things differently than he did in the in episode five. Um, you know, Julian kind of goes into detail about how he doesn't trust Ishida and he feels like Ishida is up to something and he also explains that when Yuha goes to sleep Julian kind of gets his ability of the Almighty of the Almighty and he basically gets the ability even though it's not as prominent as, as when Yuha uses it, like he doesn't have the ability 
to like basically go into the future and alter what he wants to do come back to the present and then have that play out he's not uh, efficient with it like that but he does gain the ability to see the future um, a little bit so Jubilum does gain you know like he becomes Yuha's better half <laughs> while he's asleep at midnight so when midnight happens Yuha goes to sleep and Jubilum basically takes over his position that's basically what happens so going into chapter 566 which is called what is it your what is it you fear right this is going into this is one two three four five i'm assuming chapter six is going to cover five chapters because this is going to be a fight between rukia and stern river f as not the fear and this is going to be the fight that reveals rukia's new bankai so this is going to be um cool this is stern Ritter. i believe this is by my heart by heart i forgot who this was this has to be stern Ritter, like uh you i believe stern Ritter, you Ooh, Papa, I, I forgot his exact name. But going over this chapter, again, this is going to cover what happens in episode 6. Um, I, this is going to be the Rukia versus, you know, Rose is back in, uh, in special care with a big star hole in his chest because he couldn't shut his mouth. And Rukia, she's on her way to seek out other Quincy's. She feels something touching her, touching her, and that's basically Aznot. Is Aznot. Stonewater F the fear. And mind you, he still has, well, he doesn't have it anymore, because Unohara, he created the hollow pill that when Shinigami, who had their bankais stolen from them via the, the Quincy medallion, they were able to retrieve it back because, again, Hollow Rishi is poison to Quincy's. Um, in theory, it, it's basically like them absorbing death. And, and they're basically alive people. You know, they're living. So it doesn't really work with them. Um, it kills them. So they have to get rid of it. So that was cool. So... Again, he's asking Rukia where his where is Zinbon Zakura. And they prepare to fight. This whole battle was gonna be a psychological warfare. Because Aznot, his Quincy weapon are these Reishi thorns that seeps in this black uh essence that creates fear to anybody that touches it like it, it puts them in a state of fear meaning that they get stuck memorizing a lot of things that they're scared of they get frozen they don't move but this doesn't really affect rukia because uh her zombato allows her to control ice and also control um, her molecules in her body. So she can basically freeze things around her, in, including like her, her nerves, or her in particular. Essentially, she can kill herself for a little bit. And fear doesn't affect people who are dead. So you see, she's talking to Aznot right here. She says, not possible, if, if that's what you really think. Raise those spikes against me one more time. And be fighting yourself. This is Soto no Shiraiuki. So she's basically explaining. First off, this dress that that Kubo did, that's dope. 
and pretty much she's going to explain a little bit he said although i'm able to, now to draw so that i so that i know shirayuki's true power it takes time for my body to grow accustomed to it i couldn't afford to be struck for your by your attack until then so what if you froze it i told you fear cannot be prevented with ice so she goes on to uh, as not goes on to explain my fear doesn't enter through wounds the slightest contact with skin it dissolves and seeps in it cannot be guarded against ever and of course he goes into a, a bigger philosophical explanation between relief and fear he said people always have objects of relief and objects of fear when they step into a place of relief and they ask why they feel relief they just answer just because the answer is never clear However, when they step into a place of fear, any fool will have a definitive reason for those fears. Darkness, coldness, height, confinement, pain, filthiness, they give you a list of reasons. Because in essence, all relief is tied to life and all fears are tied to death. They may not be able to give you a reason to live, but most certainly will give you a reason not to die. And it's not limited to creatures or emotions. All those that have life, they try to elude death. In other words, fear. We are designed to instinctively avoid it. So he's going into all this explanation, right? And then he hits the, then he kind of hits the, the high point where he said, it's not possible to fear. It's not possible. It's not possible for fear to be ineffective as long as you're alive. And this is the key to Rukia's new ability. Fear won't work against her because she's basically dead at the moment. Sodano Sarayuki allows her to freeze herself or basically lower her body temperature to the point where she's no longer alive right so I know Sarayaki was a sword that emits freezing from its tip it was a Zanbato that lowers the possessor's body temperature below freezing and this was like the true power of Sora no Shirayuki. Um it freezes whatever it touches the blade is simply an arm extending that freeze range and Aznod is in disbelief because he doesn't believe it And she goes on to explain, that's right, at the moment, I'm dead. I acquired the term, I acquired the means to temporarily kill my body by controlling my ratio. So, essentially, his fear is not working on her whatsoever. And she cuts him. She's minus 18 degrees at the moment. And as my blood freezes, he realizes what the hell is going on. Then she lowers her degrees to 50, minus 50. The moisture from the, the beneath the ground starts to freeze. So wherever she walks becomes an ice path. And minus, then she goes down to minus 373.15 degrees, absolute zero. Which, uh, which is a form that she can only hold for four seconds. And basically freezes in the death. So he's just one frozen statue. Now the next episode, I mean now the next chapter, which is Here Fear Here, is pretty much her her explaining that, you know, the, the her temperature, um, can destroy her her tissue and she has to control warming back up because if she's not careful as you see right there she, she can basically start bleeding from um, from her fingertips if she heals if she lowers her body temperature if she raises her body temperature back up too quick, she could crack and she could bleed. And is this fear? You call this fear. This isn't. And at this point, I's not. He pretty much breaks free from the ice prison that he was put in. His mask break, and you see that his face. The reason why he had the mask on because his lips are mutilated. He has no lips. And he goes into his vault standing. 
which looks like a heavy metal rock star, which is called Tata Foras, Fear of God. He jumps down, his Volstandic, and in, in, in his Volstandic, he's able to, he basically becomes Atachi in a sense. Atachi from Naruto where a slightest look in his eyes can like activate his genjutsu for as not his fear extends to the ocular nerves he doesn't have to use his thorns anymore to have fear seep into the body just you looking at him is a uh, is enough to put that fear in your body and then he creates like this area of effect where his eyes is basically all over the place so no matter where you look that fear is going into you so he's going into detail she's having you know all these negative feelings and all of a sudden the little bubble area of effect that as not had it shatters and big brother comes to save the day Byakuya Kuchi and even though he got back Zenbo and Sakura he isn't using it I mean this is the safest time for him to use it because when Quincy's activate their Volstandic they can no longer like they can't activate their Volstandic at the same time they're holding on to a Shinigami's Bankai through the medallion. So the fact that he's in his Volstandic right now means that he can, uh, that he can't absorb the, uh, somebody else's Bankai. But this, cha but this chapter uh, 569 is actually the chapter that episode six is named after, the White Haze. And this is when, um, Hear me out, hear me out. 
punishment. And you see this big blast right there. And the next chapter is, I believe, which is where episode six is going to end. Because again, they're going into the backstory of Aznot about when he was sick, he was in the hospital. Yuha came to visit him and uh, gave him the power of the fear through the ritual. And only thing we see in the next panel is Aznot's head sliced off and his whole body f just frozen and falling apart. And in the distance, you see Rukia in an ice robe looking very beautiful and dangerous. But in this form, she has to be real careful because she has to lower her body temperature slowly. Otherwise, you know, she could crack and basically kill herself. So she has to be real careful. And Biakia goes back to reassure her, reassure her, you know, just do it slowly. And make sure you don't, you know, you don't hurt yourself in the, in the meantime. Then they go off into protect soul society. Uh, Kotechin, she's um, fighting. She's uh, in the infirmary. And, of course, um, this little girl, I, I, I swear, I feel stupid as hell right now. Cause I watch Bleach a lot and I forgot what her name is. <laughs> like, in the midst of me talking about that, I forgot what her name was. I'm pretty sure one of y'all gonna remind me. Uh, um, I'm trying to figure out what, what the hell is her name. Uh, well, I feel so stupid right now. Cause I know who this is. It's just that my mind went blank. Yachiru, Yachiru, right? She, can, can, uh, Zaraki named her after um, Unohara, Unohana. It was Yachiru, but she goes to visit Kotechi in the infirmary, and one of the Stern Ritter, uh, Dragneil, I believe his name is Igneil. Um. The Vanish Point. He's Stern Ritter V, the Vanish Point. But there's a secret to him. I'm not going to spoil that secret because it actually leads into another fight later on down the line uh, between Kempachi and, and another Stern Ritter. But there's a... Uh, there's a secret with him. And I believe this is where the, the chapter is going to end. Greenial, Greenial, the vanishing point. And his ability is that he can basically make himself invisible, in a sense, to where you forget that he exists. So, but there's a big secret with him. There's a big secret with him. And I'm not going to go past this point because I, I think the chapter ends here. And I think it, the next episode is probably going to be called maybe like death in vision or something like that i don't know i am the edge or something like that and i can see this going to let's see one let's see one two three four five they probably do five more chapters for chapter seven but that was bleach the thousand year blood war episode the, the the chapters that i believe episode six is going to cover so that was interesting so let me how do I get to back to the beginning we gotta look up one piece now let's get now we're gonna have to scroll down a long way because the manga is so far ahead 
of where the enemy is. The manga is so far ahead from where the enemy is. I gotta be real careful not to spoil anything for, with this. And does anybody remember what chapter the Kaido fight was in the manga? I forgot. This thriller bark, I know that's that's I'm trying to remember what 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 episode. Yeah, that's Marine Ford. Yeah, Battleship, Paramount War. I should have looked this up earlier. Oh. Zoro and Pika, that's Dress Rosa. Empty Throne. Wano Sumo. Luffy, so this is when they're in Wano. Or is that fighting music? So, so Twin Dragons, Put a Little Clash. That's the Love, Drunken Baga. Next level. Level. Warrior of Liberation. I think this is what it is. No, this is after the fight. Drake or him. This is Zanusha. Trying to figure out. That's when he fought Big Mom. It had to be this one. That's when Drake backstab uh, CP0. Not going to reveal who that is, because that's a secret. This is when Luffy got his head bashed in. Warrior of Liberation. I think this is when he starts turning into uh, Sun God Nika. Oh, okay. Episode 144. Oh, okay, so this is the... All right, so I'm in the right episode right here. So this is where the latest episode left off. So chapter 1044 in the manga... Is episode one is a ten seventy one or ten seventy and ten seventy one is actually going to be the next one where Kaido and Luffy fight right here. I ain't read this in a long time, so y'all gotta forgive me for not being so accurate right off the bat. So, so right here, we're seeing. Now I'm not gonna show as much as this as I did with Bleach because I feel like this is like more of like a like I don't want to spoil too much I'm not going to go into too many chapters um, I'm probably just going to stick to this one because I don't want to spoil a lot of stuff that happens ahead you know as far as where they go to the next islands and all that I think I'm going to leave that alone I think that's going to be spoiling too much but it's just to see what's to be expected during the fight um, so, you see right there, Luffy's jumping up and down, treating everything like a rubber bounce house because of his, uh, his awakening. You know, you see, um, Kaido right there talking to him. I suppose I can interpret this as your awakening of your Paramethia powers, but something doesn't add up. Body transformations like that are trademark of Zoan powers. Yep. And Luffy right there jumps in his mouth, <laughs> jumps him, wiggles him around, you know, jumps in his body. 
and basically gives him the biggest stomach ache that he can that he can handle. So seeing this animated is actually gonna be cool. So they're asking what that is. I don't understand. Kaido's getting fatter. Was that one of his forms? Oh, no. What's going on? Why is my body made of rubber? Oh, I see two lights. <laughs> And Luffy's, of course, he's using the gum gum fruit, reaching through his eyes. At, at this point, Luffy basically has Toon Force or gag powers. You know, like Tom and Jerry, Animaniacs. He can do whatever he wants because he's in the. He controls everything in Gear 5. So the escape rocket, <laughs> he jumps through his eyeballs. <laughs> And this is going to be funny animated, and he's having the time of his life right now, because basically that's what, what he is. He's basically Toon Force. And uh, he jumps into the sky, and he turns into a giant. You know what? And he just stumps the hell out of Kaido. He turns him into a jump rope. Man, so of course after all that Kaido hits him with a blast breath sends him flying but of course that doesn't affect him at all he shakes it off does the Sonic the Hedgehog run and rooms right back up Then he scares the hell out of everybody. People can't believe in their eyes popping out. And just like his is. And it's like he said, it's something like from a comic strip. Because that's basically what he is. He's a living, breathing cartoon. And of course, it doesn't last long. And Luffy powers down, and similar to what happened when he first entered Gear 3, you know, he became a kid. Sun God Mika only lasts for so long, and he basically turns into an old man for a short period of time. Like, he can only do a... He, he can only hold that form for so long. But if we continue, he goes back into gear five. He pushes it back out. And he goes right back to fighting Kaido again. And he, it's a very powerful form, but Luffy, he's not ready yet. You know, it took him a while to, it, it took him a whole time skip to figure out how to handle Gear 3 without any negative side effects, and it might take him even longer for Gear 5. You see Kaido's bashing him in the head, knocking him around. Luffy's taking it like it ain't nothing. And what does all this mean? He turns all white. He uses the colors of armament and the Supreme King and can transfer his powers to other things. I've never seen such a free will in combat before. There is no one in this world who can defeat me. And he's convinced. Then he punches him right through the head. Straight up like a cartoon character. This is fun, isn't it, Kaido? And I'm not going to go to the next chapter. I think I'm going to leave that there. But I think this covers one whole episode. I think episode 1040, I think chapter 1044 covers one whole episode. So that's the fight between Kaido and Luffy that we'll be able to see uh, during the next episode of Bleach, which is, I think, out at the moment. And between Bleach right now, wow, did I say Bleach? I mean One Piece. But to see that fight animated is going to be very cool. There's a lot of cartoonish things that are going to happen. I wonder if they're going to still use that same uh, art style that 
when Luffy first went in Gear 5 during what, episode 1070? Or like 1071? Um, I wonder if they're going to keep that same art style to kind of to kind of keep up with the fact that he's basically a cartoon now. So that's going to be interesting to see. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was this episode of the anime live chat talking about Bleach and One Piece, um, covering the manga chapters for the latest episodes, and uh, this is the before the watch before I watch the episodes myself so it's going to be interesting to see what changes they make or seeing any of this animated to begin with um, but yeah man it's, it's definitely going to be a cool a cool uh, a cool week for anime so with that being said I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this episode stay tuned for next week where we keep up the conversation of anime and I'll see you guys then until next time, remember be humble in victory, be gracious in defeat, show no mercy in battle. World War is collective. I'm out. <laughs>